time now for your forewarn weather with Garrett James. All right, baptismal font uh, doubles as a swimming pool, I guess, anytime uh, you need to cool down there, Garrett. But uh, you're tracking monsoonal moisture and potential for some flash flooding down in southern Utah. Yeah, th yeah, that's exactly right, Glenn. There is the potential for that. Now, a lot of these storms have actually weakened here over the last couple of hours. We really saw some stronger storms in the early part of this afternoon, one that did preempt a flash flood warning for parts of Washington and Kane County. However, for northern Utah, it's been fairly quiet. However, now starting to see a few lightning strikes right around the Price area. And we can even see a few upticks in reflectivity just east of Price and towards Green River. And we can see towards Hanksville, lots of lightning strikes there, even in the eastern part of Garfield County, as well as Kane County, as these thunderstorms continue working their way to the east northeast as they do so. Brief downpours, frequent lightning strikes will be possible. Futurecast does show a lot of these will continue pushing further to the east. As they do so, they'll encounter a tad bit of dry air and they'll start to dissipate on themselves and start to really fall apart. But as they do so, we could see some gusty winds as those happen. But overnight, we will be looking at conditions trying to dry out. But we fast forward to tomorrow and we'll be looking at rain chances returning towards the Uintas by the morning hours, and then towards the western part of the state, south of I-80, towards Wendover by about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Then between I-70 and the Utah-Arizona state line, we'll be looking at more activity developing towards about really this time. And then we can even see some thunderstorms towards the Uintas by about 7 o'clock in the evening. However, we will see those start to fall apart once again as we continue to rinse and repeat with this monsoonal moisture providing thunderstorm chances and the potential for flash flooding. I'll talk about that in just a second. Let's take a look at the storm threat. We are going to be looking at a general risk for thunderstorms for the remainder of the day today. That's going to continue for tomorrow as well, but be a little bit more widespread. In fact, the entire state of Utah blanketed under that general risk, but not the entire state for Saturday. It shows just on the edge of St. George and just barely clipping the northwest corner of the state off on Saturday. But for today, we are tracking the slight risk for excessive rainfall threat. And so we can see it's that second category. So it is a higher risk today. Tomorrow, we're going to see that threat shift back off to the west and outside of the area. Flash flood potential for the remainder of the day is going to be probable for Arches, Canyonlands, Zion, Capitol Reef, Grand Staircase, Glen Canyon, but possible for San Rafael Swell and Bryce Canyon National Park. Let's take a look at current temperatures. While some places have been dealing with hotter temps in southern part of Utah, really not bad. 80, St. George, 71, Lake Powell, 79, Cedar City. Fairly comfortable temperatures, I would say, at that but it is hotter towards the north, 90, Provo, 92 for Salt Lake City, and 93 in Windover. Lowest tonight, we'll see the 60s and the 50s, mid-50s for Beaver and Escalante. However, highs tomorrow, going to see a mixed bag of the 80s and the 90s, 99 Moab, 97 St. George for the Wasatch Front. We'll be looking at temperatures hovering between 91 and 93 with rain chances between Friday and Monday. Same goes for St. George, but hotter temps upper 90s, and then the low triple digits towards Wednesday and Thursday. Glenn, back to you.